Hi everyone, so today I will be going through a tutorial on how to use GoodNotes 5 on your iPad Pro. So if you're interested in learning how to use a note-taking app such as GoodNotes 5 and how it can help you write better notes, then keep watching this video. Currently, I am a second year medical student and I use GoodNotes 5 on my iPad Pro to annotate all my lecture slides and to make my summary notes. I have used other note-taking apps in the past, such as Notability, but GoodNotes 5 is my personal favorite as I believe it is the most user-friendly and it gives you better options to organize all of your files. So let's take a look inside the iPad. All right, so once we open up our iPad, we visit the Apple Store and we search for GoodNotes so that we can download it. And it should come up here. Because I've already downloaded and paid for it, I can just simply open it. Um, but usually it will be about $12. Um, I know that's a little bit pricey, but I do think it's worth the price as it's something that I use every single day. Now, once you open up, you have folders within folders within folders, which is really great for organization. So for example, I have here my neuroscience folder for uh, med school, which I have then divided into different subsections, including my lecture notes, which I then divided into different themes, and my summary notes, which I then divided into different notebooks. So it's great for organization that way. So to create your own file, you just click the plus sign here, click on folder, and then name your folder whatever you like. Let's say we were talking about motor disorders. In that folder, we just click. This folder is currently empty, and that's no problem. We can then create a further subfolder, or we can create our own notebook. So I'll do that here now. Now with the notebooks, you have different options for covers. As you can see here, there are many different colors and styles to choose from. I personally like more fun ones such as this one. So I will select that one. And then you have your paper template. Now, as you can see here, you have several different colors to choose from, including the white, black, and yellow. I personally like to use for my summary notes, the Cornell template in the A4 size and in the portrait mode. Um, but again, you can have it in your landscape or in a different size. Lastly, what we can choose from here is the language in which we will be writing. All right, so we click Create, and we now have our notebook, and we have the Cornell template, which I've already spoke about in a separate video. So be sure to watch that video if you're interested in learning how to take the Cornell note-taking method. All right, in terms of the toolbar here, first I'll talk about the pen, or three. We have the ball pen, the fountain pen, and the brush pen. Uh, the pen comes in different colors. This is your presets of colors. You're always going to have three options in the toolbar there. And you can select what color you want. And you can actually change the presets there by going to custom. And let's say you wanted light orange added. You then just select the plus sign there. And now it's been added to your presets. And again, you can always change the color of your presets there. So I like to have dark blue, black, and red. So for example, if I were to use the brush pen right now in red, in a medium size, this is what it would look like. If I were to do in the ball pen, as you will see, it's just a little bit thinner and doesn't have the same flow. And in the fountain pen, it looks like this. So as you can see here, there are three different sizes available in your presets as well. And you can change that to whatever size you want, just be thicker. Now moving on to the eraser function. The eraser is fantastic again because there's three different sizes for your erasers as you can see here or a smaller size. The eraser also has different functionality such as only erasing a highlighter um, and having auto deselect. So in order to show you that I need to first talk about the highlighter. So with a highlighter you still have your same three presets for color I personally like pastel colors and you can customize that as much as you like. So if you want a really dark red, again, you can add it to your presets and now it's available there. But again, I just personally prefer pastel colors such as this pink. And as you can see here, it just highlights over it. And again, you have the options of changing the size of your highlighter in the same way that you do with your pen. Now, going back to the eraser function that I mentioned, so if we click on the erase highlighter only, what that will do, it will just erase the highlighter on top, but will not disturb the writing on the bottom. So, however, if we had our eraser to erase absolutely everything, 
then it will erase even the bottom of the page as well. Another thing that's really nice about the eraser is the auto deselect option. So for example, if I were writing a long sentence, if I were to erase that and I wanted to keep writing, it allows me to do that because it auto deselects. However, if I didn't have that on and I were to erase that and I want to keep writing, the eraser function is still there. Therefore, I have to manually click pen. Now I'm going to show you the shape function. It just allows you to draw shapes much more easily. So as a normal person, I can't really draw a circle like on my own, like a perfect circle. That's probably the best I can do. However, with the shape function, once I select it, it just makes that a perfect circle. You have that option to have whatever shape you make to be filled in with that color or not. So if I deselect that option, if I were to draw another circle, it would not be filled in. However, I do like it when it is filled in, simply when I'm making diagrams. So for example, if this were to be part of a flow diagram, I can select it and then start my flow diagram like that. The shape function is also great for drawing straight lines. So for example, if I were to draw my own straight line, it's a little bit wobbly, it's not super straight. However, with the shape function, it just makes it perfect. Now, the lasso tool is probably the best tool because it just ensures that you never really make an error in your notes. So for example, if I go back to these notes that I have here, if I wanted to move this part of the writing. I go to my lasso tool, I select handwriting so that it knows to actually be able to move my own handwriting. Once it's selected, I can draw around that and then move it anywhere I like. And I can also edit it so I can resize it, make it as big or as small as I want it. I can also change the color of the writing. So if I select here, I can make it red or any color I like. And as you can see in my notes here, I also have these photographs here, these images that I have imported from my lecture slides. And I can show you how to do that, and that's quite easily. So if I go to some of my lecture slides, let's say I wanted a picture of this angiogram, but I didn't want to include any of this writing that I have done in my lectures. So what I can do is go back to my lasso tool, but this time deselect handwriting and make sure images is selected. Then I draw around the photo that I'm interested in, press down with my finger, say take screenshot, and then copy. Then I can go back to my notebook, press down, paste, and then I have that. And I can make it as big or as small as I want it to be, and then place it wherever I need it to be. Then we can move on to the photos. As you can see here, I have some photos saved. So if I select this one, let's say, I can then put it in wherever I like. And with a picture, if I was just interested in a particular part of that photo, I can select crop and then just select the field that I'm interested in. And again, move it where I need it to be. Then you can also take your own photos with a camera built into your iPad. So I take a photo right now. It's not really of anything, but I can use that photo and insert it into my notes. So if you were in lecture, and you have that permission to take that photo and you can take it with your iPad camera and put it into your own notes. So then we have the text function. Um, so you're able to put a text box within your own notes and that just allows you to type out your notes. However, I usually just handwrite my notes so I don't really use that function, but it is there. And then lastly, there's a laser pointer. And so this allows you to point to a particular part of your notes without actually damaging or drawing onto your page. All right, so we have finished with main tools here, except we haven't really talked about the zoom function. So that's the zoom function, the A right there. And so what that allows you to do is zoom in into a particular part of the text. So this is a zoom in window. So you can move that window wherever you like. And what this allows you to do is just write more neatly and more closely instead of having to physically zoom in every time you want to write more neatly and clearly. So we're done with the main toolbar in the middle here. If we go to the top left corner, I will introduce here the four squares. If you select those four squares, then you're able to see every single page included in your notebook. Obviously, I don't have a lot right now, but let's say we were to go to a lecture. If I select the four squares here, I can see very quickly 
that there are 132 slides. So if I wanted to go to slide 50, instead of you know going through each slide one by one like this, I can just go to the four squares there and go to page 50. So if we go back to our notes, then there is a search toolbar there, and I can just search for anything I like, including my own handwritten text, say this. And you can see here that it has picked that up. It's not perfect, but it does work for most of the time. So let's say I wanted to search all of my lecture slides that I have received. So I go to the search toolbar there, and I select Parkinson's because that's what I'm interested in. So now I can see every time Parkinson's has come up in either my lectures or my own notes. Now let's move on to the bookmark. So right there, so all this is gonna do is just bookmark a particular page. So for example, if I go back to my lecture slides, if I wanna bookmark this page 50, I can do that right there. And then once I go back to view all of them, I can see right there with the red that that has been bookmarked. So that's just easier to find. And lastly, there is a share function, and that is there. Um, so you can export your page, would say export this page, or if you wanted to export absolutely everything. So for example, in my lectures, if I wanted to export all 130 slides, I would say export all. And then I can select in what kind of format I want to export it in. But lastly, let's talk about the icons on the top right corner. We see here this arrow, and that just means undo. So undo the last thing that I wrote or redo. And so again, that's just when you've made a mistake or you regret doing something, that's just an easy way to go about it. There are three more icons here. There's a plus sign there and that just allows you to change the template of your paper to take an image, to scan it, to take a photo or to import it. Besides there, you can see like a pen with a cross going through it. That just means that you can just go through your notes without actually writing. If you wanna go back to writing, just select that writing image and then you can go back to the writing. Beside it you see these three dots if you select that that gives you more options including the settings and the settings here so it includes the scrolling direction so it can be either horizontal meaning that you go through pages in a horizontal fashion and you create more pages by dragging and that makes a new page or you can also scroll in a vertical manner so now you scroll through your pages like that. In your settings, you're also going to find the stylus and palm rejection. And this is quite nice because you're pretty much just telling the application, how do you write? So I write with my right hand and with my palm resting like so. And this is just to ensure that when you're resting your palm, as most of us do when we're writing, the palm doesn't actually smudge the page, it's just the actual pencil that dictates the writing. All right, so those are all the main icons. Once you're able to master those main functionalities, you're able to create quite nice notes for yourself. So I can show you some of my notes that I've created here. And it's just really simple, um, even though it looks complex, just by using, again, your lasso tool for photos such as this and your highlighting function to create all those colors there. All right, so that's it. Um, I hope you guys found that useful and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, good luck with your university or med school, wherever you are at, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!